you smell a certain smell that you haven't, you know, it reminds you of your childhood. You remember these feelings that you haven't felt for years and years. Uh, but sounds can also do the same. It was transporting me back in time, and it was very, it was a very powerful feeling. My name is Colin Chinnery. My Chinese name is Qin Suan, and I'm an artist based in Beijing. Right now, I'm doing a major sound project called Beijing Sound Museum. And what this is, is I'm making a history of Beijing using only sound, going back to the 1930s and 40s up to the present day. So the reason why I um, settled on sound art was because in 2013, the old house where my mother grew up in, in Shijia Hutong, uh, was transformed into a museum. So my mother comes from quite a well-known family. Her, her mother, my grandmother, uh, is called Ling Shuhua, and she's a famous writer and painter from uh, the Chinese modernist time, so that's uh, 1930s and 40s. And uh, my mother's father is called Chen Xiying, and he was a uh, famous writer and also a teacher. And he was the first uh, representative to UNESCO uh, for China um, in the United Nations in Paris. My mother's grandfather is called Ling Fupeng, and he was the last imperial mayor of Beijing. So um, that's why we had this massive house that we don't have anymore. So I'm uh, half British and I'm half Chinese. My mother is Chinese, my father is English. I grew up in Edinburgh in Scotland. So um, I'm very much British in that I'm both Scottish and English, and I'm very much Chinese because I spent half my life in China. So when I was eight years old, uh, my parents thought, well, it's time that Colin learned Chinese. And so they brought me to Beijing. And the original plan was for me to stay here for five or six months. But what happened in the end was that I started learning Kung Fu. After just one year, I became number two in Beijing. There's this film called Shaolin Temple to Kids of Shaolin. I was one of those Kung Fu kids. I did this film with Jet Li for about 10 months. And then I uh, got enrolled into the Beijing Ushu team, which was like, you know, the top team to be in. Uh, and they gave me a choice, either become a pro uh, or not, and I decided not. And I thought, no, I'm going back to high school. I'm going to high school. I'm going to school. I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah, that's when I went back to the UK. What happened was, like, my grandmother uh, was critically ill. We brought her back to China. There was a lot of planning for her funeral because she's a famous literary figure in China. In this process, I learned a lot about kind of like the complications of 20th century Chinese history, and it became really interesting for me. So I decided to study Chinese. I came to Beijing. What happened was that I made some friends with artists who were doing a band and they needed a drummer. And I lied and I said, I can play the drums. I've never touched a drum kit before in my life, but I said, I can play the drums. Who cares? They're all amateurs anyway, right? So, um, so I uh, quickly bought a little, um, little drum pad, and little drumsticks, and I started practicing. <laughs> Just like, you know, as long as I know a little bit, I'm not lying anymore. So. The style that we had was, was very strange. It became apparent that we had a very different sound from all the other bands in, in, in China at the time. We called the band Xue Wei because the idea of Xue Wei is pressure point in acupuncture. Uh, the idea of like acupuncture points was that nerves converge on these points. I went back to the UK when our band split up. So now I was approaching 30 years old and I thought, well, I've got to decide what I want to do. I quit my job in London, so I came back with my wife to Beijing. When my mother grew up in um, this nice house in central Beijing, it was rebuilt into the museum you see today. I started with Old Beijing because that's where the Shijia Hutong Museum is based in um, a Hutong, in a courtyard. It's uh, a museum about old Beijing culture. There's a very rich sound tradition in Beijing. It's what makes it different from other cultures or the cultures of other places. Mm -hmm. 
So the example uh, that I think is most obvious is the pigeon whistle. Pigeon fancying is a huge thing all over the world. However, there's only in Beijing where people actually put a whistle on the back of a pigeon. And when they fly, they make this wonderful sound and they have different kinds of whistles, like all kinds of ornate uh, whistles. Some have deeper tones, some higher tones. You'd have to be very, very sensitive to sound to even think of that idea. So I started there and realized that actually this is a kind of blank. People think about Beijing culture and they know about these things, but they don't think of them in that perspective. Um, so I, I started recording those traditional sounds. The sounds are genuinely quite difficult to record because these sounds are sounds that have disappeared, they no longer exist, or they're sounds that are disappearing. Or there are sounds that uh, they still exist, but it's out there in the world with all other sounds. So, for example, pigeon whistles is like a really difficult sound to record because you can't invite the pigeons to fly in the sound recording studio. <laughs> you know, like not enough space unless you get the world's largest, like one square kilometer recording studio that is 200 meters high. Uh, it's really going to be hard to get that two pigeons to do that. The reason why I want to make a history of Beijing is to connect with people. I realized that uh, this project is not about tradition, it's not about history, it's really about uh, living people now. The way I see contemporary society is that Society is not just young people. Society is old people, young people. Contemporary society consists of everyone who's alive, from the oldest to the youngest. And their memories are all of equal value, really, to society. It's a personal history, and everyone who knows the sound will have a different feeling when hearing it because everyone has a different personal experience. And I can recreate a lot of those old sounds, and then those sounds can become a connection point for lots of different people and it becomes a different kind of history 